there's a wide range of uh, sectors in emerging markets and a wide range, uh, consequently, of analyst views on the sectors. In general, for the companies that we invest in, uh, of course, we, we forecast our own earnings internally. And in general, for the companies that we invest in, our estimates are sitting ahead of consensus estimates. So for the companies that we invest in, we think uh, that there is room actually for earnings upgrades, uh, but it varies by sector. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, in the material sector, which we don't really invest in, analysts have rapidly upgraded their estimates based on this beginning uh, of, a, of a commodity cycle potentially. But we think there's risk there that if that fizzles out, those earning e estimates will be too high. In general, for emerging markets, analysts have been less aggressive in forecasting a kind of post-COVID recovery uh, than their peers in Europe and the US. So in general, in valuation sense, and also in terms of emerging markets, uh, earnings estimate sense, uh, we are, we're quite comfortable. And certainly the key for the recovery here, I think we're going to enter a phase in uh, developed markets where monetary policy uh, is tested. So in general, developed markets are running uh, unorthodox monetary policy. So here we're talking about zero interest rates, uh, uh, quantitative easing and so on. Emerging markets in general are still running very orthodox traditional monetary policy. So we would look for countries in particular that have that orthodox monetary policy. So in other words, have room to cut interest rates as necessary, have not engaged in quantitative easing, have free floating currencies, and so we're talking about ASEAN economies here, uh, India. And at the same time, these are economies that are the primary long-term driver is the, uh, the what we call the internal engine of domestic demand. So uh, whilst we're seeing this rally in commodity prices at the moment, that's helping some of the commodity countries in emerging markets, over the medium to long term, uh, we think that um, global trade as a proportion of GDP is likely peaked, is likely we're going to enter a, a period of stagnation in global trade to GDP. And as a consequence, you want to invest in uh, uh, economies that have their own internal demand, like India, like Malaysia, Indonesia, and so on. A key driver, we believe, uh, this is a structural tailwind on a, on a five to 10 year view for emerging markets beyond the kind of existing uh, uh, foundation, which is you know, things like urbanization, uh, the rising middle class in emerging markets. We're also coming to the end, it seems, of a long US dollar bull market. So if you think of the way the US dollars traded uh, since the Nixon shock, since the US dollar floated freely in the early 70s, there's been broad cycles that have averaged eight years in length. Well, based on that, we're very, very late in a US dollar uh, bull market. If we then enter a phase, a prolonged period, as I said, the average has been eight years of US dollar weakness. Historically, that's been absolutely the best time to own emerging market equities. If you look at previous US dollar bear markets, the best performing asset class has tended to be emerging market equities. So the timing is unclear because currency is very, very complex, but certainly we're, we're long overdue a US dollar bear market. And that would give us a beautiful tailwind in addition to those long-term structural features I spoke about earlier. The advantage that the North KPM product has is it's very, very concentrated, very high conviction approach. So we're looking for a maximum 40 ideas across a universe of 23 countries, very, very diverse mix of, of countries in the index. And so that means we can position the portfolio in such a way really for any uh, macroeconomic scenario. There's certain countries in emerging markets that are current account surplus, there's current account deficit countries, there are countries that benefit from high commodity prices, there are countries that are uh, casualties of high commodity prices. So the key for us is navigating uh, through the external environment. And you know, since the inception of the fund in 2008, we've seen all manner of uh, economic uh, backdrops, and we have the uh, luxury of, uh, of looking only for a very, very uh, small idea, hand-picked portfolio, the best ideas uh, for the prevailing conditions.